Back with Mike Bernard. Mike, appreciate you coming back on with us for just a few minutes. We're going to uh, look at tonight's matchup, NFL East, which, again, I've always had trouble trying to figure out how Dallas was in the East, but that really doesn't matter. They used to be in the NFC West. They used to be in the NFC West, yes. And, uh, and it, it, it's crazy. You know, I remember a time when it before Major League Baseball – reconfigured themselves. Atlanta was in the West a long time ago. So anyway, yeah. but, but, and now we have Missouri in the SEC East and everything. So <laughs> ev evidently either someone or, or I failed geography in, in school. So I don't know which one it was, but Hey, this game is going to be, should be, should be a good game. You have the division leading Eagles at five and oh, and we talking about Jalen hurts back in the, uh, Back in the our college segment earlier this morning, he leads those Eagles, and he really was a few years ago. You thought, oh, Jalen Hurts is going to be okay, but hey, right now all eyes are on Jalen Hurts in the NFL. To be quite frank with you, they're going to be taking on the second place Cowboys, who are four and one, and uh, the Cowboys they thought they would have the NFL's premier quarterback with Dak Prescott, and I say premier. Uh, I think you have to, when you talk about NFL quarterbacks, you have to remove Tom Brady from the equation and Aaron Rodgers, because I think they're on a different level. But the Cowboys lost the opener, and then they lost Dak Prescott. Many thought the Cowboys were done at that time, and I will include myself in that. I did not think that they would run off four straight wins like they have. Yeah, Coach, it's a case where you have a solid defense, a serviceable, a serviceable quarterback in Cooper Rush. And uh, a lot of times you'll see a team refocus when their star is injured. I believe that's the case here. Cowboys defense, they allow 10 points to the Rams, 10 to Washington, 16 to the Giants. Through their first five games, they're only giving up uh, 14 points per game. Philadelphia, they're scoring 27 a game, allowing only 17. Jalen Hurts, he's coming into his own. And I'll tell you, Coach, uh, you'll probably remember this, but I did. I wasn't certain that Jalen Hurts was going to be a star quarterback. I thought he might be a, a utility-type player, you know, come in to run the Wildcat, that type of thing. So he's proven that's not the case. Uh, and he, the thing about this kid, he never gets too high or too low, no matter how big the moment. We saw it at Alabama, at Oklahoma. And now in the NFL, great demeanor. And again, we're going to get a little sports radio here, but Carson Wentz, he was a jerk to Hertz when he was a backup, when Hertz was a backup to Wentz. And that didn't even get out until long after Wentz was gone. That's the type of Jalen Hertz, there's no sweat off his back. He just said, hey, I'll just do my job. Yeah, he's faced that before. Uh, the situation at Alabama when Tua came in in the second half of the national championship game. And even Alabama fans, you know, back then, well, it was almost like, well, Tua's been there all along. He did all this, though Jalen Hurts, you know, got them to that point. Tua comes in the second half, does a great job, and, and, and again, give Tua all the respect that, that he deserves. But Jalen Hurts handled that with total class, he, you know, played his role the next year at Alabama, never complained after the season was over with, then went in and talked to Nick Saban about transferring. They figured out the best place for him to go. And that's why he's beloved by Alabama fans, Oklahoma fans, and, and now Eagles fans. You know, Jalen Hurts is one of those guys who transcends teams. It just sort of like the late, great Pat Sullivan. It didn't matter who you were for. You were a Pat Sullivan fan. Same thing with, with Bo Jackson. And I guess I'm just mentioning those because I, I, I know of those, you know, personally from Auburn. But you, you have other players that are, are like that across, uh, you know, I, I think Doug Flutie's like that. I think Doug Flutie's one of those guys. that Everybody likes Doug Flutie. He, who doesn't like, you know, he doesn't like Doug Flutie. Right. And it, what you're talking about, likable people, equates to – Good teammates, and Jalen Hurts is a great teammate. Well, not only is he a great teammate, though, but again, let's let's give him 
uh, kudos for what he is. He's a great player, too, averaging four yards per carry and completing 68% of his passes this year. But now he's going to be facing the toughest defense that he's faced all year here. Dallas, third in points allowed behind the Niners and the Bills. Yep, and uh, some of the other numbers, Cowboys, they've been a covering machine on the road. They've covered 10 of their last 11 road games. In this series, they've covered seven of their last 10 trips to Philly. Now, those trends lean to Dallas, but I'm going to look at the under here. Coach, primetime NFL unders are dominating. Look, the public always wants to pull for overs, so they're going to bet the over. The value is going to be in the unders. And uh, no one wants to pull for punts and fumbles, right? So the public bets the overs. That's where you have the intrinsic value with the under. Um, the Cowboys' last, seven, last 17 games, the America's team, only three of their 17 have gone over. A lot of that has to do with the fact that, the uh, again, the, the numbers bet too high. Well, Mike, we appreciate you coming back on with us for a second time on Sunday morning. Uh, we have you on very early in the morning, and then uh, we've got you back on for this NFL game strictly because our viewers have asked for this. You know, we always tell our viewers that, that we listen to you. We, we'll do what you want us to do. And in some of our comments are always, hey, you know, y'all need to preview the Sunday night game on Sunday morning with the college game. So for the first week, we were able to uh, carve out some time uh, besides our interviews and everything and your college breakdown. We were able to get this in, and, and we're going to fit it into the schedule every Sunday morning from now on. And yeah. Well, if you're willing to, we'll be, we'll be putting it into the schedule every Sunday morning from now on. Absolutely. I'm willing. I've, look, we're already breaking down the games. I'm pulling up the notes. We're handicapping the games. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be on and, and break down the primetime game each Sunday. And just want to remind everyone, any games that you would like to have us break down from the coaches and handicappers standpoint, go ahead and put that in the comments and, and we'll take a look at it. And if we can, we'll get to those. But we always love to hear from our viewers and be sure to subscribe and like and share with your friends out there. Well, Mike, we will uh, think, well, we'll have you back on the morning blitz in the morning. We'll review some NFL games and the latest college news. What I'm hearing is is that Brian Harson is probably pretty safe at Auburn until they hire an athletic director. As long as things just don't get totally embarrassing, uh, he may stick around for a while. Right, and uh, and they weren't embarrassed last week. They covered the number and they were competitive. Okay, Mike, we'll. See you again in the morning on the Morning Blitz. Have a good Sunday. Thanks, Coach. You as well.